Up in this light heavyweight tournament, Spong versus Verlinden. First to the glory ring. In his quarterfinal matchup, he made short work of his opponent, but took a surprise right hand that knocked him to the mat before landing a one punch knockout 31 seconds into the bout. Here is Tyrone Spong. The favorite to win this tournament, Tyrone Spong, got a bit of a wake-up call from the young Michael Duke, who floored him early in that first fight. Spong responded with a crushing knockout. And he really didn't have a lot to say in the interview. I don't know if he was clearing his head or what, but nonetheless, he's here, as many people had predicted he would be, in the semifinals. And he's got that punch, and it's got to be a situation where, in the back of Philippe's mind, He's got to be thinking, i got to stay out of way of that thing. His opponent pushed the pace early in his quarterfinal matchup, taking advantage of his speed and kicking power. Round two, he took as many as he delivered and survived round three to take a split decision. Here is Philippe Verlinden. for a better semifinal matchup with the number two ranked light heavyweight, Philippe Verlinden, facing the favorite to win this tournament, Tyrone Spong, and already punching his ticket to the finals, Daniel Elunga, the number one ranked light heavyweight. This is gonna be a battle. Well, we got uh, two of the best fighters in the game right here, and the Belgian Bull, uh, even though he's got half as much ex experience, is probably gonna become the Belgian Matador in this fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. He runs his professional record to 87 wins with five losses and, of course, adds one knockout to that record with 58 total in his career. At 1.88 meters, 6 feet 2 inches tall, he weighed in at 94.8 kilos, 209 pounds. Here tonight representing Suriname, ladies and gentlemen, Tyrone, king of the ring, Spa. And standing on my left and fighting out of the red corner, his record now 41 wins, nine losses, one draw at 1.89 meters and standing six feet, two inches, one half. He is 94 kilos, weighed in at 207 pounds, ranked number two in the world in the light heavyweight division. Here is Philippe, the Belgian Bull, Verlinden. And once again, your referee is Bufanel El Ghazawi. Fighters, blue rules, no elbow, no hard blocks, no holding, no place, okay? Second, good luck. Judge, judge, judge. Semi-finals, Tyrone Spong in the red and Philippe Verlinden in the black. Philippe has got a pretty nasty abrasion above his left eye. And unfortunately, that is where Tyrone Spong's overhand right will probably land. Keep an eye on that. That could be a factor. You also see a lot of bruising to the body, the left side of Verlinden. As you take a look at the total ring time for both fighters, the advantage definitely goes to Spong thanks to that devastating knockout. Yeah, almost nine minutes more, and, and that's going to be a, a thing for Verlinden. He's going to just stay out of the way. And, Here's the problem for Verlinden right now. He's facing a fighter who is probably as fast as he is, got a heavier punch. Two solid low kicks landed by Tyrone Spawn. Goes to work on the legs in this first round. Two minutes to go. Spawn is being first, and that was previously what Verlinden was so good at. Verlinden looks like a man who was in a fight earlier. Tyrone Spong does not. Looks very fresh. Lots of movement, lots of speed. Yeah, he was in a fight. Steve McKenna really put it on him, especially in that last round. I mean, all the scratches upside his body. Looked like he was flogged or something. So 
Some believe that Steve McKinnon should be in this semifinal fight. That's not the case. But Lyndon moves on. But Lyndon's doing crisp combinations here. Spong trying to maybe get some ring time in. I mean, his first fight was so short against Duke. But what a classic that was. Absolutely. Spong doesn't even look like he is sweating at this point. As we approach the one minute mark in round number one. In Tyrone Spong's corner was former UFC light heavyweight champion Rashad Evans as Tyrone Spong trains with the Black Zillions down in Boca Raton, Florida. And Rashad, I asked him at uh, a previous weigh-in, it was when uh, Tyrone Spong fought Remy Bonyaski, it was in London. I said, Rashad, what's it like to uh, spar with Tyrone Spong? And he said, he just smiled and said, it's not good, man. <laughs> Standing, that is. Of course. Fighters exchange knees. Spong, a devastating knockout artist, so talented. Knee and leg kick to the body from Spawn, echoed throughout the arena. Yeah, that left kick, I mean, it landed right on the sweet spot, too. Somewhere between the ribs, going right after the liver. Spawn hunting uh, Felipe Linden down, walking him down, trying to trap him in the corner, picking his shots, though. Tyrone Spong in that first round to take a look at coach Henry Hooft in a very calm Tyrone Spong as we check out the action from the first round. And it was a, a nice inside low kick, but with some serious power. But then almost went to the floor on that shot. Serious power. And, but then here we go again. There's another left kick. And it's a nice little skip there, and it lands right to the body on the sweet spot. Spawn comes in with that big jab behind it. You wonder if Spawn set him up. He delivers some strikes in this second round. If Berlinden had ever loaded up in his life, chances are at some point he's going to want to do that against Spawn, because Spawn probably doesn't expect that, because Berlinden is a fast guy that uh, generally gets things done with volumes of punches rather than one. Spawn gets a jab through and follows with a low kick. Ron Kruk and Steven Quadros ringside here for Glory 9 in New York City. Semi-final fight in the light heavyweight tournament between Tyrone Spong and Philippe Verlinden. This is one of those situations for Philippe Verlinden. It's as damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you throw a punch or a kick, you're probably going to get countered with some kind of a bomb because Spawn pretty much throws everything really hard. But if you, hang, if you hang back, you're going to get picked apart. Big body shots from Spawn and then a low kick from Verlinden. Philippe trying to answer back off the ropes. Oh, that, see, that knee is the weapon that he can really do some damage with. But the problem is, Spong isn't ducking down and making his chin available for the weapon. Nice left landed by Spong. Got right through the gloves and flushed to the face. Spong really getting work in. He's switching to southpaw now. And, oh, that left kick. Left kick to the ribs. You wonder how much more Verlinden can take as Spong continues to stalk his opponent. Goes to another body shot. Looking very fresh is Tyrone Spawn. Spawn being very economical here because he isn't throwing any haymakers. You know, he could probably do a lot of damage if he lands one. And, but Philippe is very hard to hit. And he can see if you telegraph a punch, like especially a wide one. One minute to go in the second round, scheduled for three. Berlinden getting out kickbox nonetheless. Surviving, not getting hurt to the point where he's wobbled or staggered. But see, look at this, Berlinden will fire back. He still has his quickness. Absolutely, still dangerous. 
lands one of those shots. Never know, takes one big shot. The beauty of these tournaments, never over. 30 seconds to go in round number two. But Lyndon has a certain rhythm. He'll stand in, in place, but then he'll move after about three seconds. But sometimes he waits too long, he gets kicked in the leg. Spahani misses with a wicked right hook. Goes to the body. In some ways, Spong is not toying with Philippe Linden, but he's not really going after him. He, he's, he's basically just trying to outpoint him. The number two ranked light heavyweight for a reason. Philippe Verlinden. How tough is this guy? And he's really tough. Fought a lot at heavyweight though, so yep. he's used to getting hit and kicked pretty hard. Now he wanted this shot. He said that he felt that Tyrone Spong was getting all the attention and it bothered him. Take a look at the action in round two. Well, he got what he wanted, and they got tangled up there, and Tyrone Spong slipped to the canvas, but really wasn't any damage. It was just... Sometimes these things happen in kickboxing. <laughs> yes, they do. Third round here in the semifinals of the Glory 9 Light Heavyweight Tournament. Philippe Verlinden and Tyrone Spong. See that left head kick. I mean, you should go to more of that because right now to outbox Tyron Spong is probably not going to happen. He's just got to go after his head. But speaking of head kicks, Tyron went high with his left kick. All the latest rankings and tournament action, fighter videos, check out our website, gloryworldseries.com. Now look at the head movement that Tyron Spong incorporates. You know, he says he has uh, his eyes on boxing as well. You can see that. See this? Yep. Side to side, shoulder to shoulder. Two big jabs by Spawn. Zeroing in now. And it's uh, kind of a fitting thing to do because Philippe Linden prides himself in being a great boxer as well. And he, and he actually is, you know, for sure. Because uh, many times people don't go the distance with Mr. Spawn. Spawn now landing at will, really. Seems very fresh. But Verlander right there with the jump left knee, trying to go outside the boxing box because it, the boxing fight is probably not going to win. Needs to kick, needs to knee. Spong with ambitions in mixed martial arts, boxing and kickboxing. Wants to do them all. Got a fight scheduled in August in mixed martial arts. That last low kick was like he didn't throw with any intention. It's kind of strange. Linden does not want to be stuck here in the corner. Spong isn't really going after Verlinden. It's a little surprising to me. I mean, I don't think it's because he's saving himself. I think it's sometimes there's such respect between the fighters. They don't do that. But right now, I mean, Verlinden is always going to be dangerous. So he can't be just random and wild. But he just threw a real soft low kick, and it wasn't even blocked. Under a minute to go in this third and final round. Verlinden continuing to move forward and what a game effort. It really is, he's using his, his movement. He's getting trapped against the ropes, but he always slides one side or the other. That way he won't get bombed out of there. And he's firing back though, see that's the thing. Yeah. I think Spong in his head, he thinks, well, Verlinden's a good boxing, let me see if I can outbox him. But he's giving Verlinden a shot here. 15 seconds left, and Verlinden, hope he doesn't land one of those knees that could spoil the party for Spong, but it ain't gonna happen. Tyrone Spong looking to move on to the finals.
see which fighter will be moving on to the finals. But coming up later, to check out Rico Verhoeven looking sharp there in the dark shadows here in New York City. He'll be matched up with Errol Zimmerman. Heavyweight battle. Those two really don't like each other. You gotta love when two fighters really take their trash talk and, and then bring it into the ring. And these two have been trash talking uh, seriously. Yeah, it's kind of unique because usually the European kickboxers don't do much of that. But this is kind of an anomaly. Tyrone Spong, the favorite to win this light heavyweight tournament. Dropping down from heavyweight. They score them out 30 27, 30 27, and 29 28. It is a unanimous decision for your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Tyrone Spong. Tyrone, great performance. So unlike your first fight. Yeah. Uh, but for Leap, he's a really good boxer. Did you want to get some time in with him and test your boxing against him? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I always want to win by knockout, but he's just a smart fighter. Very fast, technical. And uh, he saw the, the first fight too, so he knew that it was, you know, important to fight smart. He moved a lot, and uh, it's hard to, to, to get somebody then, you know, if, he, if he's not running but moving away. And, you know, so that's what he did. And then Speaking of smart and technical, Daniel Ilunga awaits you in the finals. What's going to happen there? I'm going to think about it in the locker room. <laughs> well said. Give it up for him one more time. King of the ring, Tyrone Spong. Well, at least he's consistent with his game planning to the fight professor, Steven Quadros. Tyrone Spong moves on to the Glory 9 Finals, where he'll be matched up with the number one ranked light heavyweight in the division, Daniel Ilunga. This is the dream matchup that we had hoped for, and we got it. Fight fans, this one's gonna be great.